Warm welcome to the 25th uh, edition of Africa Live and the screening of Miraculous Weapons by Jean-Pierre Bécolo. And we welcome you as well as the director of the film. Um, super shortly, this film has been finalized and presented in 2017, in the same year than uh, Afrique de la Pensée en Mouvement and Our Wishes. So actually, I, I mentioned that these three films are somehow three slices of the same meal. So we have like three different types of cinema. And you were just saying something about that you are interested in uh, an abundant genre. So eventually, Miraculous Weapons, the text by Aimé Césaire, or the poetry of Césaire, and the abandonment belong to each other. Um, You might say something now, and we might discuss later on after the film. Okay. Mm. Okay. Good evening. Um, the, okay. This film, uh, as Marilyn just said, uh, the title is from uh, Aimé Césaire, uh, "Miraculous Weapons," "Les Arts Miraculeuses," but it's not an adaptation of his work. Oh, you understand why? Actually, it's important. Uh, the film was written to be shot first in America. Um, but uh, we tried to do it in Texas. Uh, we couldn't because we didn't have money. So finally, we were able to do it in South Africa, and it's set in the past. Just get it as the past, because I cannot say 50s or 60s, but it's in the past. Uh, maybe that's what I should say, because then you watch it, and then we talk about it at the end. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, this incredible film. After having watched uh, Afrique la Pensée en Mouvement, there is something that connects to it again. Um, uh, there is um, that that uh, all these books that are around the library, etc., etc. So a, a huge amount of of quotes that we are uh, dealing with. But I think uh, the major thing that really happens in this film is that we are at the same time within a completely artificial space and we could like think of the genres that you deal with, like from melodrama to uh, telenovela or very popular media actually, or a very popular form. Uh, but at the same time, it it uh, it is intriguing how you um, create a space in which we can see how uh, gender relations, the the geography of gender, is um, actually acting acted out in a very uh, it's very subtle. I would say it's really. Uh, it's not just irony or uh, distancing. It gets you at some points where you have to think about the relations and you don't just feel them. You have to think them. And um, I'm, I'm really, I'm, uh, I'm overwhelmed by this idea that we are able to feel and to think at the same time while watching uh, the film. So, so thank you for that first. Um, Um, may maybe you would like to say something about uh, that ironic distance and how you deal with this kind of irony to create a space in which uh, the figures somehow re reflect on themselves, you know? And then we can go on and you have questions, of course. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, what I can say about this film is that... Um, The challenge was to make a film on something very important, the question of giving death, really, um, um, which maybe is not very trendy these days, but because a lot of people, a lot of countries are trying to bring death penalty back. Uh, but at the same time, um, um, creating a kind of story where this kind of team of women defending life against death, because that's what it's, the big picture is, 
but that have to kind of go through little obstacles that can stop most of us to see the big picture. Mm -hmm. So the idea was, how do you make a film on death penalty? Um, uh, but at the same time, uh, not fall into the trap of, um, of uh, not making people appearing too heroic, too, too big, really. Uh, uh, my idea was really that people who do those things are normal people. There's not really something where you have to be so different. So, re so my idea was to find weakness, you know, uh, that stopped all of us to kind of be able to deal with the big thing. And I, I feel that like death is something that makes all of us crazy or that should make us all, all of us crazy, you know, kind of. Because obviously uh, it's not something I mean, anybody really knows what to do, really. I mean, when you think about it in that sense. So um, now the I always like to kind of put it out there. Um, one of the main question here is uh, what is going to save us? Now I'm taking it in the, uh, uh, you can look at it in the negritude, mm -hmm. kind of uh, the negritude level, you know. Uh, um, this whole crazy concept of negritude when actually it's like, how do you, st why do you think that you can use the oppression tools to free yourself from oppression? which is crazy. I mean, it's not really logical. But these were like uh, negritude ideas, obviously in the mouth of uh, a character like this, obviously also shows how crazy it could be uh, because it's really uh, like somebody who's mad, believing that this is uh, something possible. But at the same time, it's a very interesting idea. Uh, 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 obviously, it was because he's in under these conditions that uh, this idea takes all its, its meaning. Mm -hmm. So the question of the three characters representing in that negative context, who is going to save us? Is it somebody who comes from far, uh, like the character of Lawrence? Is it knowledge, uh, the, 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 the French teacher? Or is it ourselves, his wife? So it's good to also look at it, not just in a soap opera kind of dimension, but in, in this kind of uh, metaphor. Uh, metaphor, yeah. Mm. So. Um, uh, uh, yes. Um, uh, actually, the metaphor starts with the idea of who is incarcerated, who is in captivity. And uh, actually, everyone is in captivity. All characters are all somehow imprisoned. In the, um, and I was wondering why the main character, as a black man, he's actually captivated in his own body and the logic of negritude, in a sense, as much as uh, the white figures would be captivated in their own logic of being white or being part of that uh, idea of mobility, but still stuck in that kind of codependence. So, um, uh, the, um, uh, the, the idea of the metaphor of captivity, how far does it go? Um, and can, what have you f tried to find out, no? I would say the film is a weak clue. Mm -hmm. Even if we're dealing with open space of South Africa and going out, uh, it's only four characters, you know, obviously it could have happened. Yeah, so it's kind of a weak clue. Uh, somebody was actually saying that maybe it's a Sartre weak clue, but I said, I didn't think about it really, but it was Sartre in the the story of a prisoner. But, um, yeah, so the idea is, um, uh, uh, obviously, the um, uh, mainly, the, the the character who comes from far, Lawrence Newman, who's actually about 
try to find obviously meaning herself, you know, just and he found this guy in death row, and then obviously, um, um, she's maybe I would say she's kind of a little bit lost, and obviously the relation with this guy is tried to save him was giving her meaning. That's why she was able to make all this trip despite all the frustration and everything. But the idea was, how do we? Um, and there's no judgment to make on this thing. Like, how do we get involved in somebody else's business? So we, somebody who's supposed to be somebody else, you know? And that's actually like, um, uh, this form of solidarity, humanistic, whatever. It doesn't matter what it's motivated with, but this idea of reaching out and being able to connect with a cause that obviously is not yours. Yeah. I mean, from, from the beginning. Uh, there is. Um, I, I was wondering why you gave her like a, a, a Finnish or Swedish name because I mean Sweden in the seventies, for example, were uh, uh, un under um, in the presidency time of Olaf Palme were super supportive to and black power in the states and to South African dissident people getting people out. So is that is this part of like the metaphor? Like you see, Swedish. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it was not a real name for sure. Okay. Um, um, no, but the thing is that it was like coming from. It actually, could have been Swiss also. It was like uh, just like a kind of very rich or Nordic or whatever European country, uh, where also I mean, uh, yeah, it was more meaningful than uh, because you can see the difference with uh, the French teacher. Uh, she's more clear about what she's about and what she's doing and uh. just, just uh, thinking of language um it's amazing that everyone actually is depossessed of its of his or her own, own language everyone speaks in a language that is not uh, his or her own and uh emil i was um please help me with the name of the actor the main abosolo, abosolo he Actually, he is a French-speaking artist. So you make him speak English and learn French. So what what does this mean? And you have a French person speaking English and all the accents. Um, a, a kind of depossession of um, of language. Um, but I think it's acting first. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I think it's very important also to to be able to perform. You know, it's a performance. So um, uh, the story is supposed to not speak really French, uh, um, but then you know we had to kind of develop this character. Who's uh, I think his accent is more like Caribbeans in the <laughs> in the film or something like this. But uh, yeah, no, the, 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 the I think what is very important is the ability of for me the actor to kind of act mm -hmm. you know and i think um uh, i mean i don't know about you but i felt they were very believable <laughs> in most of this it's okay, like uh, uh, society it's a reality sometimes uh, sometimes sometimes happens uh, something like this is just what's going on in the world like uh, coming in prison the guy never come out or the man goes somewhere to work and have a relationship there and here so it is really f uh, for me very interesting to see how the three of them are very uh, uh, negotiation. Negotiation. They understand each other and uh, try to solve the problem what they face because the guy maybe, maybe never come back, and uh, then they just peacefully try to handle the problem. So I, I just appreciate them. No, what is clear, and I agree, is that uh, we don't uh, say much about where it's coming from. We don't even know what is done. Um, and that was in purpose, you know, because he shouldn't have been loaded with uh, some kind of background um, that would have kind of made, for me, the interest shift a little bit. So I was thinking we just focus on, as you're saying, on this issue, you know, of fighting, fighting against death penalty and dealing with you know the whole idea of being on death row yeah and even we never never say it's south africa we, t we say it's free state 
uh, free, free state, which is the real state where we shot, but just felt that free state is more interesting than South Africa. Really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I mean, it's, that's exactly the point where I think it's so ironic that um, when you're in South Africa and you, you are in free state, it's not free state. So there is that kind of double meaning to each detail that, and you have that road uh, with, the, uh, with the symmetry uh, in the fields and on the other side, the cows. So you have the whole economy of, of space uh, displayed around. You don't need to create it, you, you have it. Okay, it's true that shooting, okay, we shot in a small town called Fierde in Free State. Um, okay, just to give a little bit of an idea of why I decided to shoot there, obviously beside the landscape and uh, the, it, it was the city where um, the actress was born, uh, Holile Chabalala, who's also the co-producer of the film. Uh, and most of the time, what we do as filmmakers, I mean, South African filmmakers do, they all go leave the city they were born to go to Johannesburg or Cape Town, try to make it. Because obviously they were, most of them in very poor conditions where they came from. And they kind of forget about that space. Uh, I was thinking two things. First, it was very meaningful for her to shoot there. You know, uh, this is the town she grew up. And then, things start taking this double meaning. Um, where, for example, a lot of the people in the film, uh, even in the South African white community, remember her growing up because she was raised by her grandfather. So they remember this young girl with the grandfather always, you know, because he was just like kind of working at a store. Uh, so he made the very interesting, even the filming process, like the prison where we shot was actually a real prison. At first I was thinking about going to do it in a kind of school or, and then this guy told us the story how he was in that prison himself. Mm -hmm. So as we started feeling like, okay, now it's very interesting. We just added a few props to shoot there, but it was a real prison. Some people in the crew we took from actually were in that prison. Uh, we were living ourselves in um, in um, somebody's house, uh, and this was like very old apartheid uh, couple. You know, who, I mean, I say apartheid you know, because they were very old, so they live all these different this time change, and we were all you know from all these countries in the house, and it was such a very very interesting experience for them. I'm for sure because that's where like you know some people coming from. The, the, the cameraman was coming from Nairobi, the, um, uh, the two actresses, and then me, and then so anyway, all that was uh, a kind of new world uh, for them, uh, and for, and obviously for us also. Um, and then um, the vintage cars is this guy who's very rich, who stopped everything to give us his car and fix them because they had to fix the cars because they were not really like in good shape. So. He really wanted to help, and then uh, he gave to the production a whole cow because he had a ranch, you know, for us to eat. And and then we did a party for the film in the township, and he's never been to the township before. And he came to the township for the first time, and then he invited us to his ranch. And we took the whole crew to his ranch. We've never been to his ranch either. So it was very interesting. Somebody actually said yeah, it was a film in the film, but. We had so many little things like this happening there, and I felt yeah, it was very rich, you know, uh, beside uh, the film we were making. It was actually a very, very, uh, it was very meaningful to be there and be doing this film. Yeah. That's, it's really interesting because then it becomes, uh, there's like a documentary layer to what we see. Um, and I, I, I was thinking of Elaine Proctor's film, um, uh, who was uh, who shot this film about three 
South African uh, women, uh, three friends, it's called Friends, exactly. A film from 1988 in apartheid, um, a black, a colored and a white woman being friends and hiding uh, each other's friends around. So there are like things like that that popped up my mind when I saw the film, that there is something like it becomes a container of much more than just the three stories about these uh, women, but about who cares, who is doing the daily business, who has uh, the bread and breakfast. Um, so that was intentional, of course, that you thought a hey, bread and breakfast, it's not just a, a hotel and not just um, Emil saying it's hope. Uh, it is about the daily thing of producing bed and breakfast. Or, oh, uh, I think so, that's what you, what you intended. Um. The, the, the character of uh, Lesedi, played by Holile Chabalala, actually, she's, it's a character, um, uh, like uh, just, a, I mean, uh, not a machine, but she's like energy, with the, very silent, very uh, retenu, like, uh, but energy, like, uh, so that's why we put on a bicycle. Um, some people said we should have kept the bicycle, but <laughs> at some point it was difficult to be two in the bicycle. But still, so the bicycle was also to show that energy and how she's very in a very calm and serene way, just like you know fighting, you know, uh, but in a very so um, um, uh, and that's kind of the the, the, the whole idea of, of uh, how do you. Uh, under these circumstances, how do you, what do you do really, like practically uh, after crying or something like this? So that was the idea of really that energy and that action that took another meaning mm -hmm. uh, and not, uh, uh, yeah, it was again another layer of like, it's not really anymore about running a bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. is Because also running a bed and breakfast next to a prison, it was actually also because to so kind of support uh, the guy who was on death row. What was the idea behind the first scene at the train station? Because you could have started at the airport or at the Re car rental or wherever, but it was a very strange train station. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's why. Um, no, you're right, actually. It was, obviously, when you do location and you do, you always try to find, because it's kind of obvious, as you can imagine, already predictable, like, okay, the film start. And so, and the train station was like, there's no train. It was a very old train station, because there was no train. So, and then we said, what if we started when the train has just left, you know? But visually, it was kind of just more interesting uh, having all the, these characters. We don't know what, but like, you know, so that was actually just to kind of have visually something different. <laughs> Nobody's asking the questions about the light colors, the light blue and the light rose and the light. Who, who took the decision on, on the look? On, on the film? Uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 the other actor was a kind of student, it was, but she was finished, she, has, she had finished already in, from Johannesburg. And so that was her first kind of project just from out of school. Um, the, but the, but the, 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 okay, this, this is what happened. We went to, so Fair Day is a place where you have a lot of antique shops, mm -hmm. like a lot, like a bit huge. And so we had so much potential with those antique things that yeah, we kind of really spent, we said we're going to really take advantage of this. Um, uh, the, obviously, the, you can imagine that when you make a film like this with all these women, they are very clear about the aesthetics for sure. So you have to negotiate a lot of things. So I would say, um, yes, the discussion was democratic, I would say, in terms of clothes and because, uh, um, uh, okay, we had like, like uh, I would say three sources of clothes, for example, uh, um, Andreas who came from uh, Stockholm brought some, uh, Holili bought some in Johannesburg, then uh, 
uh, what else? Yeah, she's on the two sorts. So we took like all these things and things also that existed already we, re we could rent out. Yeah. So uh, obviously uh, we designed a few things, but it was always like, okay, oh, the, the discussion was very long, you know. Okay, no, I should be dressed like this because this is happening. You know, and this is so obviously it was helping a lot of the work, you know, to kind of get because everybody was clear about what need to be she we need to put on and the meaning of it and and always discussing this which is very comfortable because most of the time when you are alone to make all these decisions it's kind of heavy so i think we couldn't go wrong with this one so so what you're saying is that each character somehow decided its own style no 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 it was actually uh, conceptual like like for example okay i'll just give you the example of the last scene okay the last scene is like okay he's going to be executed last time so it's like funeral okay but uh, which is actually like uh, something that we talk about so it's like it's a funeral but still so it means that uh, for example uh, uh, mainly the the, the holile's wife should be really like you know really well dressed or but uh, so and then um not the, in black. No, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Actually, it was more white than black. Uh, and then um, uh, there were, uh, Marine, who was playing the teacher, was like, if you put an African thing. So, so we, it was like the last thing we had to kind of do, kind of something a little bit different. And then, so, uh, but the other one, we just said, okay, just keep this uh, uh, purple thing. But obviously, discussion was happening with most of the... Uh, the same to try to find the meaning and the look and uh, mm -hmm. yeah it, it's interesting in the contrast of thinking of death row and someone is going to be executed and you have these huge discussions on on fashion happening how to prepare yourself about going into that space um and i've never heard of that before that sometimes or now uh clothes um matter so much and uh, how do you uh, put yourself into shape to confront yourself into in, or bring yourself into such a situation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, um, but they were very professional. Eh? I mean, I would say really we were lucky. I was lucky because some films is different. Huh? But uh, I would say I, I really had the, the chance to work with like, most of these actors were really into it, really. They, it was their film, huh? it was not just mine. So, um, uh, uh, and beyond the, 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 the fashion, discussions were on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, like who should drive which car, for example. You know? so, so we had all these cars, and then you try this one, no, 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 it's not good for this. So I think um, it was, um, yeah, it was interesting to work like that because then you have more people thinking, not just you. Uh, and, and the performance of the main uh, character, or uh, uh, who is like in in the death row, his his way of trying to control his emotions, is it something that he developed by himself, or was it also part of a discursive situation? Okay, Emil is very. I mean, he's a very experienced actor, yes. huh? uh, and um, obviously. Um, he will always um, have something to suggest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he will always say, you know, okay, I read the script, you know, and what if when I'm coming, I do this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he would actually even say, I could also do that. So he's very, very, it, it takes time really to prepare these things, really. Uh, and again, he made my job very easy. I said, no, 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 not this one, that one. Mm -hmm. so, um, uh, and um, uh, yeah, and then there are a few you just now have to say, okay, no, what if you you do like this, you stay, you, you do like this. So I, I would say, um, okay, my feeling was that, and he's very experienced, I think, as an actor, he's made much many films, more films than me for sure. Uh, and um, the the fact that most of them wish they could work more like this. That's really still actually what you, uh, yesterday before, uh, the day before, before coming, I was having dinner with uh, Marine who played the teacher. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a format, we didn't think about it, you know, it's not really like uh, the, the industry, you know? 
but it's a format that is more f uh, less organized, but still with more uh, implication. People do so, and what we all wish to be able to do that again, you know. So it's like, okay, when are we going to do another film? You know, because when they go back and work in the normal industry, it's good for the name, for the money, but they always wish we could work more like this, for sure. Anyone else a comment, a question? Everyone is happy. It's more that I just want to thank yes. for the film. Just to give you a thank you from my side uh, to have this uh, whole horizon between uh, spirituality in the words of uh, the aesthetic French uh, and the ideas which are behind uh, for life. Uh, after death or within life uh, itself, according to um, the very central uh, situations you are creating between the persons and the density of the closeness with the very easy setups from the rooms you are using. So I think with this minimalistic, uh, you have created <coughs> a lot of emotions and uh, thoughts about life in his <laughs> eternal or total uh, subjects and that's uh, it came over and it uh, I think it touched uh, everybody's point of uh, skin emotion <laughs> and thoughts thank, thank you. you thank you Last word to you. Uh, the, um, the main character um, in one sentence characterizes himself as a victim of capitalistic society, but then he puts it away. Why does he say it if he puts it away then? I mean, was that just like... The question is, why is it mentioning capitalistic society? Just once and then... Ah, you wish he could talk more about capitalism. Yeah, the uh, rest of the film was about love. Yes, yes. It was about uh, hope. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Being part of... Um, no, hope being created by being loved by somebody else. Which is in contrast to being the victim of capitalistic society. Really? <laughs> yeah. Actually, hope is what keeps us, what keeps us, a way of thinking we are victims of the capitalist society. Hope is what makes us believe it's not that bad. <laughs> That's very interesting. This is the first time. <laughs> so um, obviously, the idea that slavery and colonialism were capitalistic. I think that's really what was trying to the reason. But that's not the subject, as you're saying, of the film. But it was just to kind of put that word in there because, you know, um, obviously you can take all this oppression about discrimination, but people sometimes forget to articulate that maybe it was just capitalism. <laughs> maybe because mm -hmm. in theory, I mean, that's me, me now, it's not really the film, but in theory is that people who were doing slave trade didn't have anything against black people. They just want to make money, right? <laughs> so the product of it, which generate maybe now whatever hatred, whatever, was a consequence of the idea of trying to make money selling people. So I just think sometimes it's good to point the fact that capitalism is also like at the bottom of some of it, you know? But what is interesting in his question is that uh, is love and hope outside of capitalistic system, yes or not, you know? So if it's part of it, then the negotiations between the three women with a man become really interesting in terms of they also perform within a system uh, that, you know, in a capitalistic dependency. I, I would say the idea of love makes a world, makes, makes people... Um, 
be able to live in a world which they wouldn't support, other, which, which they couldn't live in otherwise. The hope makes them, um, yeah, take it. Oh, yeah, which we, is okay, yeah? I mean... No, 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 that I uh, buy it. So, no, that's... Uh, um, actually, I like the fact that you kind of summarize that, you know, way... I don't think I had it before. So, the idea that... Uh, the film is about hope, love, and you know, and 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 hope, and being able to love someone even you know, under these circumstances or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's true. It's true that um, the, the only tool that's now against something huge as uh, the system and death penalty. What else do you really have? You know. Uh, so uh, yes, definitely it's, uh, and that's what is being in different forms, even with some kind of uh, aspect, you know, and that's really what is being, is at stake really. How do we embrace, you know, uh, uh, this hope and this love, you know, to kind of give it in, to save someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still, that love is not happening on, um, like in a in an utopian context, it is there is dependency, and the couple, the first thing that they do is to negotiate if the income is enough to pay back uh, the loans, something like that. So um, there is a relationship that is built on on economy, if you will, and. She is supporting him, and the you know there is a kind of codependency, and and within the love is part of that kind of system, you know. So, um, uh, th there was this fantasy in the seventies to think that if capitalism is actually producing the body as something that you can use, you can sell it, you can buy it and everything, and love is part of that system, then what is happening if you don't have the capitalistic system anymore? So how do you engage with each other? And that's where love comes in again, that love is something that creates solidarity, that you can care about each other without being sold out or being s selling something either. So. Uh, I think this is really like an interesting path to consider the relationships between these, the three women, two, the men, but also the three um, together. And there's the moment that I really like is when uh, the black character says, it's not about him anymore, it's about about us. And uh, it's it's actually giving away that capitalistic logic of support and then you have solidarity support and things that that you never see really no they don't they don't matter <clears throat> it's actually very interesting because uh, i mean we don't do very i mean life is about doing certain things I, I don't know okay obviously the spectrum of things we can do i don't say it's limited but sometimes you don't have much to do really you know um uh, and when you look at it in the african context really uh, at the end of the day People sell something in the market, uh, or maybe they work somewhere. And then, so what they do is kind of very clear, and that's life. It's not about work. It's not, it's not about it's life, really. You know, going to sell something to the market is life. You know, and uh, I think it, it's good to kind of, obviously, in uh, uh, and you mentioned it very well when you say it's not about utopian. You know, people. This is what people live with, really, and that's what they do. You know, uh, and they will do it. Either they have a child in prison, either they have, uh, you know, they're dealing with a funeral. Or they, so that's what they do. And I think um, um, maybe that's in relation to cinema also, because uh, uh, how do you produce, you know, uh, all these utopia with people doing normal, th doing these things within these things they actually do every day. So I think that's really very, very, very interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where the film becomes an homage to to these ladies, hmm? of taking care of that. It's about care again. <laughs> uh, okay, but okay. Now, why should I? Did I take the 
three women and not uh, not another man or whatever. So it's I mean it's very simple. It's just the idea that it's the battle of life against death. Really, that's what it is. You know, life against death. Really, and then. Uh, for me, the, the metaphor of, I mean, it's a metaphor, I don't know, but like uh, of the three women is actually because they represent life, yeah. you know, and they may be more equipped to fight against death, really. But that was really, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, um, it's 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 it's. I think it's all the idea of feeling powerless. It's the idea of feeling powerless. Somebody said to me, you know, this film is like a funeral, really. But it, I mean, because it's like, okay, obviously we know he's going to die, and then now it's like almost, almost crying before actually dies. So that's kind of it's kind of reversed, and and I kind of agree with that in many sense. So the idea is of. Um, of feeling powerless and trying to do something. Now it's whatever you can do. Like, what can you really do? Nothing. But in the film, it's always these attempts. You know, what you can do, how you carry yourself instead of coming depressed and not, you know. So all these things are kind of little acts to fight against death, really. Anyone else? Maybe we just close and and I mean we, uh, Jean Pierre is uh, you are still here for the next two days. Uh, tomorrow is the it's the screening at a uh, film forum Hoogst. and um, a Tuesday it's like the double feature of uh, Naked Reality and Our Wishes. So be welcome to come back. Yes. And a lot of other things are going to happen. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, Jean-Pierre. Thank, uh, thank you for staying.